So the longest common subsequence problem. <clears throat> um, this problem uh, first we're gonna do uh, is uh, insert zero for those empty strings. So if if we wanted to compare the empty string with a, we put a zero. Uh, an empty string with b would be zero, <clears throat> um, and we would keep doing this until the end of the string for the first uh, string. The second string, which is A, C, E, would be the same way because comparing an empty string with uh, A, C, or E uh, gives us zero. Then we want to check for A and A in both strings and see if there's a match. There is in this instance. Next, we want to check for A and B since there was a previous um, match uh, from A and A, we continue with one, as there's only been one match. Uh, we're gonna continue until we finish the end of the string, which it would be A and C, which would be one, A and D, one, and then A and E, which would be one. Then continuing down the row, uh, C and A, would still be one. Uh, C and B would be one. C and C would increment to two by adding one, um, since there's a match now. And then we're gonna take the max of C and D, which is two, as we just previously done. Uh, and then E and C, we take the max of that. And that would be two. For the next row, E and A, uh, we take the max of zero and one, which will be one. In this instance of E and B, uh, the max here would be one. The next instance would be E and C, the max here is two. And then E and D, the max here is two. And now E and E are match. So now it's going to be three. Uh, if you want to check how which letters are being matched, we take since three isn't in on the first on the top, um, I guess box with the two in there, and then on the left side there's also a two since three is not in each one of them. That means that the letter that came before had to been from the diagonal. So from here, we take E, and then from, from two at this point, since two came from the left side, we go this way. And then from here, C, uh, C and C has two, but each direction from the diagonal, the top and the left, don't have a two. That means that it came from the diagonal. And that's the next letter, C. And then now we check for A. The max there is one. And then from here, uh, each, di uh, each direction has zero. So that means it came from the diagonal. So that means A is the other letter. And then from there, um, you wanna take the length of the letters here would be three. And that's the answer to this uh, longest common subsequence problem. All right, in this part of the video, I'm gonna do the coding part of the problem. Uh, so right now we see the function uh, longest common substring. So I'm gonna put the parameters in uh, and that's gonna be text one and text two. Uh, you can call it whatever. Um, next, we're going to find the length of both those text strings. Uh, after that, we're going to do the we're going to we're going to make a two D array or a list uh, because the Python uses lists. Um, I'm going to call the rows and columns. Uh, with the length 
of the strings plus one. I'm going to call the table or the, the 2D array DP. And to create a 2D, uh, I guess, array or list, uh, you put two square brackets. And then I'm going to fill the table with zeros. So I put zero for I in range of the columns first. And then uh, out of outside of the first square brackets, we put four uh, J in range um, the rows. Uh, and you can see this if I print out DP. Uh, and then I have to make the strings. So we're going to use the ones that we did from the other video. Uh, A, B, C, D, E. And then string to A, C, E. And then we'll just call the function. Uh, and then pass those strings in. And then we'll run that. And then you should see um, a 2D array of zeros. Um, and then from there, we're going to use two for loops. Um, we're going to call it I range in uh, the length of the first string plus one. And then make another for loop or inner for loop called J range uh, the length of the second string plus I or plus one <laughs> and then now we get the last letter of each string so that would be the E here and then the E and ace of, of the second string uh, to do that we're going to declare like char one you can call it whatever uh, get it from the string and then i minus one and then do that for the other string uh, two j minus one and then we're going to do a base case of what happens when um, i equals zero or j equals zero so if i equals zero or j equals zero, then we return the table, the 2D table of where it is, the, the position that it is right now, and we'll set that as zero, since uh, we'll end up at the end of, I guess, the calls the, that the, the computer makes, uh, recursive calls. Uh, next would be L if uh, when if we find a if we find a match of both strings, then we'll call DP of I J uh, one. So that'll be the last uh, last character, uh, and then we'll call DP of I minus one and j minus one else we'll have two options of i and j we find the max of either the the dp of i minus minus one J, so we find that version, or we find DP of I, so not moving I, just moving J of that option. And then we can print this and we'll see the numbers. And then we'll return DP of N and M. And then 
I'm going to run this. Okay, so we see this is the answer. We get three for this for these two strings. So it would be A, C, and E. Okay, and this is doing so. If you wanted to see the the version of what we did with the other video, we would just do backwards, and then it would give us the length of the first string uh, or the second string, um, and then you can see that first row saw zeros the second row was with was it was all ones but it had one match and then the the next row started the next match so the, there was a two between the C's and then the last row had a three because there was a match between the E's um, the other way would do it the uh, if you flip the string uh, string one to this and then string two to that then uh, you'll see a different version of the of the 2d array that I made uh, but you'll still get the same answer um, and this has a time complexity of let me put it here of O N times N. Uh, and that's the the length of each string. Um, doing it this way. Uh, after that, um, I'm going to make another video on how to do the recursive way of thinking of, of this for, for this problem. Um, and that's going to use two different methods. One's going to be a very terrible time complexity of like 2 to the n times m, uh, which is very, it's exponential and it's, it's terrible. Um, but there's a way to improve the time or perf perf the performance of that uh, using memoization. So uh, in the next video I will show you how to do that.